Hello and welcome back to the Not Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Today's video is our final one ahead of the League Cup final on Sunday. We've already had plenty of videos, articles, interviews and different bits and bobs across our website and socials across the week. So do check that out. Um, and the links below this video, we've had our exclusive interviews ahead of this one from a Livingston perspective. We've already spoke to Emmanuel Dorado. Um, character I think it'd be fair to say so do check that out once you've finished watching this video and as well as that from a St John's perspective speaking to Danny McNamara and current St Johnson player uh, Liam Gordon so do check those out as well. Today's video with Gavin Riley, Livingston striker if you do remember a few months ago when we first started this channel um, Gavin was one of the first people we had on and um, looking forward to his time at Carlisle close to home in League 2 this season but such as football Things change very quickly now. He could be a League Cup winner by the end of this weekend. So we hope you do enjoy covering lots of things from his initial move to Livingston, his thoughts on the League Cup final, as well as his own battle with COVID-19. So plenty of stuff involved. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so. Like this video and until next time. Peace. Bye. Obviously, last time sat in this setting, you were at Carlisle and looking forward to the League 2 season in less than six months on, you're at Livingston ready to play in a cup final at Hamden in front of no fans. It's a bizarre season and perhaps the bizarrest of years. It's been bizarre for, like you say, a number of reasons. Obviously, Chopper and changing halfway through the season, but then with everything going on, it's just been it's been a very strange season, but at the end of the day, there's still, uh, there's still points and trophies to be won at the end of the day. Look back on it, so nobody's going to ask you, or oh, did you play in at Hamden in front of 50,000 folk? It's, did you play at Hamden in the cup final? That's the, the be all and end all of it, basically. So, no, it has been it has been a bit strange, but just looking forward to, to Sunday and the rest of the season as a whole, basically. Yeah, I know you spoke about it a bit in your professor and stuff you've done in a couple of ones since then, but at the time when I spoke to you, it seemed like you were quite looking forward to being like near Dumfries and things like that. Um, and I know Livingston's not a million miles away, but um, at the same time, um, to move clubs again, sort of three clubs in a year now, is it? Uh, I went to, so I was on Cheltenham and then on loan first half of last season and then went back to the parent club, which was Bristol Rovers. Got Unfortunately, got in, played a couple of games and then got injured, so missed the rest of the season, even though it cu got curtailed early because of uh, COVID. And then obviously was out of contract back at Carlisle. And I always said in the summer, if, if you could have picked any team that I kind of wanted to go to, my whole at some part of my career, it would have been Callow just because of the location. I'm Gretna originally and my partner's from Fries, so it'd have been ideal for us being back home. Unfortunately, it didn't work out in a football sense, so I had to look elsewhere and when Livingston were interested, I was just happy to get it all done and dusted, basically. Yeah, it's, it's gone fairly well for Livingston as a whole. Um, well, since you've came in, I mean, you, until the last couple of games, you just haven't really known what defeat feels like. I knew I was going to have to be patient coming in because the run that the guys were on, it was an incredible run. And then since I was there, before I actually got COVID myself, got involved in a few games, drew with Selwick, and then we won a couple as well. So the team were flying. And then, unfortunately, the two back-to-back -back defeats sort of took the wind out of sails a wee bit, but I had a good point away at St Mirren last, last week. I mean, you could have been disappointed with a point, but with the conditions and the run of form they'd been on themselves, we look at that come the end of the season, it'll be... A valuable point gain, so it's given us give us a wee bit of momentum. Looking forward to the big one on Sunday. Yeah, biggest game in your career? Probably, yep. Yeah. I think the second biggest after that was I played in a playoff game at Ibrox. I played Rangers in the playoffs. I think it would have been six or seven years ago when I was at Queen itself, but it's the first time I've played in. I played it. I've won the Ramsden's Cup, so could you call it a national final? Yeah, but obviously yeah, the maybe. League Cup. But, League Cup's definitely bigger than the 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 Challenge Cup or whatever it's called nowadays. It's I think it's changed names about ten times since oh, I played in. It's got a brilliant name now. Um, is it still no? It's not the Iron Brew Cup. It's the Caramel Wafer Chocolate. I uh, didn't play it this year, but it was somewhere I think that's the last time it was a Tonics Tea Cake Wafer or something like that. But no, it's uh, I've obviously played in the final of that and won that when I was at Queen Hill. But the League Cup definitely will be the biggest game of my career, and if we won it, the biggest achievement in my career so far. Yeah, you're speaking to couple of guys at St Johnson, a couple of guys at Livingston. It's it's such a rare final. I doubt we're going to see a final like this very often in the next however many years just because of how big 
Celtic and Rangers have been, especially in the last 10 years or so, it's um, you don't get finals like this very often. Even you take Celtic and Rangers out of the equation, you've got the two big Edinburgh clubs and then you've got Aberdeen as well who aren't in the final. So, like you said, it's it's part strange for the folk looking from the outside, but it's credit, credit to the two clubs for actually getting there in the first place. You've just got to, at the end of the day, you've just got to beat who's put in front of you and win your games. You don't be really bother about anyone else and just take care of your own business. And I think we've done that and so have St Johnston. So, End of the day, it's credit to the two clubs, and hopefully, it's us that ends up going and winning it on Sunday. Yeah. Um, were you involved? Were you? Uh, you made your debut at Hamden, didn't you? Or you came off the bench? Uh, the no, game? it was the I made my debut against Celtic, Celtic, Celtic on the Wednesday, and then came on at Hamden on the Sunday. So it wasn't a bad two first games to be involved in, anyway. So yeah, not too bad, no. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine that week is still <laughs> a bit of a whirlwind for you. I mean, I know, yeah. It's uh, I'd, I've actually been lucky enough to play at Hamden before that game, unfortunately, on the end of a very big defeat in the Youth Cup final about 10 years ago now. But it's uh, no, regardless of fans being there, it's a privilege to, to have the opportunity to play at the, 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 the national stadium basically in a cup final. So, like I said earlier in this, it doesn't matter if there's one person there or 50,000, you're playing in a national final come the end of the day. That's all that, that matters come the end of it. Yeah. I know you've only been there for a short while compared to some of the rest of the guys you play with, but Livingston have been a fairy tale story, really, not just this season, but in the last sort of maybe four or five, they've gone from League One to now potentially another cup. On Sundays, almost these feel like underdogs in this because it always seems to be that Livingston are the, the unfavoured team. Perhaps, yeah. I mean, you're saying it's underdogs and you're saying that they've went on this fairy tale, but it's credit to the, the guys and the staff and the players that there before when I arrived as well that the hard work that goes beyond goes on in the background basically I mean I'd like to I'd go as far as to say it was the hardest working team in the league so I'm always a great believer in hard work gets you success and results so I think it's just uh, over time and over the years they've just got better and better and built and built basically and it's credit to the players to, from what they've done at the start of the season to get to where they are so if we are classed as underdogs great because I think that's a position that suits the, suits the team basically so I think it, anyone can be anyone come come Sunday basically I mean form goes out the window for a cup final and I'd say come the back of the games going on St Johnson have been on a better run than us recently over the last couple of weeks but uh, come the end of the day that goes out the window on Sunday it's just whoever turns up come come turn when the, when the game starts Easy enough winner's medal for you if you get it. I mean, we cameo off the bench on the, um, on the semi final, and then even if you start on, on Sunday, I mean, one start the rest of them have been having to turn over teams left, right, and centre on the build up to this. You just need a wee start. Uh, it'd be nice to get, obviously, if I'd like to start or get on the pitch, but the guys, the guys that have been there before me are the ones that have got us here. I mean, Hopefully on Sunday can contribute in some sort of way, but you've got to then look at the guys that have started the games that sort of went way back whenever it started. Come was it July or whenever the the yeah. cup game started. So no, it'll be a collective effort, and that's one of the huge strengths that we've got at Livingston is we're all together in this. We're all a team. We're a team basically. It comes starts right from the back backroom staff right along to the players. Yeah, is this run. The results in this competition, especially early in the season, um, sort of maybe made up for the poor league form that obviously led to Gary Holt um, leaving early in the season. Obviously, he's went on this incredible run since then. Why is it the sort of that drives that? Because even in the wildest imaginations of probably Livingston fans as well, to go on the run, you did probably surpassed all that. Not too sure, to be fair. I mean, like you say, I've been in it before where the cup can be a wee bit of a distraction for you if you're not doing so great in the league. I mean, some you get to a weekend and it's a cup game, it's sort of the weight's off your shoulders almost. But the thing is, that one of the things, we do quite a lot of psychology work, we'll get a psychologist to come in and one of the things she's drilled home is there's not much change between now and the start of the season. It's basically the same team. So I added a couple of players come January, but... It, the talent and the hard work has been there. It's just about bringing that out. And so, I mean, the guys at the start of the season did have, they, they did have a tough start, but it's just credit to them for knuckling down, keeping to their own traits and keeping to the hard work that goes on to to then come out of that and to go on that brilliant run they've done in the league, but then into the, bring that into the Cups and got them where they are, they are just now. Yeah, because Livingston, for me, are always one of these teams that 
you look at some other clubs and you go, right, he's their main man. He's If he's out the team, then they're done. You don't really look at Livingston like that. You, you Even though there's good players there, you don't look at it and go, right, if he drops out. I mean, that was proven in the Celtic games. He's made like seven subs and still drew himself. Just about to say that, it shows the collectiveness we've got, but also the, the squad depth at the same time. I mean, for a club the size of Livingston, the squad depth they've got is brilliant. I mean, like you said, the Celtic game, seven changes to come in and then still get a result against the previous champions is just credit to the lads. So, no, it, it, but it's also a good thing for, for the manager and that because it means it keeps all the boys on their toes knowing that they're not guaranteed to start come the weekend because, you know, if you're not up to the standards that he set and the guy in front of you set, you're not going to play and there's going to be somebody coming in that's just as good to take your jersey, basically. Yeah. Can he, um, can he go much further out? Speaking about him, um, have you met A, um, somebody as loud as David Martindale and B, as infectious a character in football? I don't know. I've, I've obviously played against him at previous times and you obviously hear him, hear him then, but it's different when you're on the end of one of them shouts on him and just this season as well, it's intensified just because of the fact there's nobody in the ground, so it's double as loud as what it should be, but he just he wants to win as much as we do. He's kicking every ball for us and it's just credit to him for the hard work that he puts in that he's just wanting to win as much as we are. So, no, at the time you sort of, you could hear him and you're sort of thinking, oh no, here he goes again. But at the end of the day, he's just wanting the best for all of us, to be honest. Yeah, his, his story, I mean, you don't, I don't need to tell anybody that watches or reads the article of this about his story. There's enough people doing that for me, but... It would just it would cap everything off because not just talking about the football, like he's been with Livingston since like League One, especially he's been there since the very start. He uh, he's a he's just a man of the club, basically. I think he'd do anything for the club. So it's just testament to him the, the hard work that he's put in over the years and just in general as a guy. I mean, he might seem crazy when he's shouting on the side, but he is a genuine and honest guy and he'll tell you things how it is. And as a player, that's all that you want. So the guys are going out for as much as himself, but they're going out for him as at the same time. So it's just credit to him and it's fair play for him to, to keep working hard as well as he has, to be honest. Yeah. Did it help? Um, maybe not so much in a football sense, but always whenever you speak to him and things like that, he's not like some other managers that have came through the traditional football ranks and are well media trained and stuff like that. They is very off the cuff in pretty much most things he does, but as a coach, he seems quite meticulous. I think that's one of the things that folk don't understand. Like you said, he's with his background and stuff, folk think, oh, he might not know what he's talking about. I can tell you, he's very, very clued in tactically and definitely knows what he's doing. So, no, he, he definitely knows how to get his message across and the tactics that we do, it's all in depth and the analysis. So, it's all that you can ask for for a play. It sets you up with all the, the tools and the armour you need going into the Saturday, knowing how you're going to outwit your opponents and hopefully go on and win. Sunday's game then, I mean, without giving too much away, I'd, the way these games have gone between the sides this season, it'll probably be quite tight. You'd like to think so. I mean, the St Johnston game, maybe three weeks, when it was three weeks ago, it was one of the games I missed due from, from having COVID. I obviously watched it and it there wasn't much in the game. There wasn't any like clear cut chances, I would say. It was just a I would say it was just a case of them taking advantage of a set piece. Probably concentration is the best word to describe it. So they are very good at set pieces, so it's one thing that we'll need to hopefully be better at this time around on Sunday. But hopefully, come with a bigger pitch and the bigger pitch in Livingston's anyway. Hopefully, we can we can get the ball down a wee bit more, get them turning, and hopefully exploit them. Come come that. Yeah, you are right in terms of COVID and stuff. Now I know you'll obviously be back training things like that, but I know um, who is it? I think there was a couple of other players this season that have had that have had like long COVID where it's like proper battered them for a couple. Once I've heard different stories and obviously you need to be sensitive because folk have unfortunately lost a life from it but my time of it I had two days of feeling as if I had the flu a wee bit worn down and I lost my taste on one of the days but it's all right because my cooking and that's rubbish anyway so I didn't really really mind but the after them two days I was back to normal so I understand and I appreciate that folk have uh, they have had it worse than me, to be honest. I only had them two days out of the out of the ten. So no, since I've been back in, back in two and a full weeks now, and played sixty five minutes on Saturday against St Mirren, and I felt I obviously thought coming back in the first week I would be struggling. I didn't feel as fit as what what thought I would, but I definitely felt not too bad come Saturday for the game. And once you get involved in the game and you get a foot in it, you sort of gain a wee bit of confidence from it. But no, yeah, I'm definitely ready to go now. 
Yeah, I suppose um, even if you weren't fully 100% fit, you'd definitely find the extra 10, 20% for the weekend now. I think it's one of the ones that the guys on the treatment table with them and broken legs would be trying to get themselves back in for training. It's like you say, it's one of those games that you might not get another chance in your career to play in a in a national final. So no, I think everyone's been training double extra hard this weekend, this week leading up to it. So no, everyone's. I think we are lucky that we have got near enough a full squad ready for this weekend. So everyone's just looking forward to it. Yeah, a bit of an odd. I know obviously um, you'll have the increased media attention and stuff online from fans and things like that so obviously goes up as well but I mean you heard the manager saying these are all getting like cars and stuff into the stadium it's just completely bizarre I think that's one of the that's partly my fault to be fair because oh, well, I, I didn't want to I didn't want to pin the blame on you but I did hear him speaking about it <laughs> the, the club done followed all the protocols they'd been told and I'd follow all the protocols I'd been told so I think it was just an unfortunate event but I think they're just a wee bit nervous now in case they get another scenario like that. And to be honest, a lot of the guys do live over towards Glasgow, to be fair. So I think more than safety and logistics are taking so many buses. I think they've just decided to to go for uh, just to take the cars. So, no, it's uh, definitely strange going into a stadium, parking in your own car ready for a final. But to be fair, this is what we're living in at the moment. So it is what it is. Yeah, yeah so I know... When you lift, if you do lift the cup, whoever lifts it, you lift it at an empty stadium, you drive home and you sit in your, your house and you've got a game three days later against Rangers, so it's not exactly like you can go out in an all-night bender after it, but yeah, I suppose it, uh, it basically... There'll be no... Uh, <sighs> what is it? On you go. There'll be no drinking or something like that this year, I don't think, or no. uh, like open top bus for a long while. I think it's a shame. Hopefully come the summer when things ease a wee bit, we maybe get to, if we do go and win it, we'll get to do them celebrations. But at the moment, it will just be a case of, I think, heading back to your family and just try to celebrate and that as best you can with them. But like you say, it's, it is weird because we're playing the Sunday with them. We've got a big game on the Wednesday, so it's a quick turnaround again. But just the way that the season is this year, that it's all getting crammed in. But I'm sure at some point, hopefully, we do go and win on Sunday, we will get a chance to celebrate as a team and as a collective with the fans and the supporters. Yeah, I think um, I think that's maybe the advantage of Livingston not being like, because uh, Liverpool, for example, have won the league down south. They were planning a big party, but they're not going to have the, the going round Anfield stuff after, I mean, they might as well be finishing the Champions League spots this year. I know Livingston and Liverpool are on a, a different strategy. Yeah. In terms of clubs in that, um, David Martindale is a better coach than you, Klopp, obviously, but, <laughs> but I suppose that's the thing for you is you just don't know when you are going to be back at a cup final. So, I mean, you yeah. will, be able, yeah. will be able to book that open top bus parade, whether it's in a year's time, six months, you'll still be able to have yeah. that point. I think, yeah, like you say, for the club size of Livingston, I think it was 2004 the last time, two, yeah, 2004 the last time they won won this truck so it's been quite a while now so like you say if it's six months time a year's time there will be that sort of celebration so even if guys have sort of left the club at that point like to think they'd be invited back because like you say like I said before it's it has been a collective a collective uh, achievement I mean it's not just one guy that's won as a trophy it has been everyone plugging in together so hopefully hopefully it's not too far away but I think there will be a celebration coming at some point yeah uh, hopefully for you guys um, there is I'm sure the folk that have recorded St Johnson stuff with will wonder why I've said the exact same thing yeah hopefully um, <laughs> but, um, when it's one or the other no, I know I'm just I'm getting my half and half scarf ready but, um, <laughs> but what would um, I win on Sunday mean to you? like I said it's the biggest game that I've played it will be if I'm lucky enough to play it will be the biggest game that I've played in my career and if I do win it it will be the biggest achievement that I've done in my career so I've been lucky enough to win trophies and I've won two league titles in my career as well but you, you just the fine the cup finals are different like you say you only get might want to get one chance to do it so you've got a and it, and it's at Hamden as well I mean you won't you don't get the chance to do that again so no regardless of fans being there in circumstances if we do win it I'll enjoy every moment of it